Anyone who was an Animal Planet kid has some repressed memories of some of the most heinous and brutal things in nature. Thanks to shows such as The Most Extreme, Monsters Inside Us, and Lost Tapes. I think it was the tapeworm episode of Monsters Inside Us that freaked me out the most. However, the reality of these little body beasts is even more disturbing. And guess what? They've been sucking the life essence of other animals for hundreds of millions of years. A relatively new amber specimen also proves that advanced tapeworms were present in Cretaceous sharks, possibly passing through dinosaurs. Parasites lay at the crossroad between gross and awesome. They steal nutrients from other animals, but do so in the most efficient way possible. Becoming a parasite warps the bodies of any animal group that ends up down that route, pretty much always, no matter what group they started out as. They lose limbs, armor, eyes, and much more. They gain giant, horrifying surgical tools to get inside their hosts, or to cut them open when they aren't paying attention, sometimes even with the numbing agents to help that process along. Some animals do parasitely things that aren't really true parasites. They get weird, but not as weird as true parasites. Of the many parasites that colonize our bodies, I think it is the tapeworm that terrified me the most as a kid. Still grosses me out a ton, but I prioritize better now. Just like the idea of a microscopic egg you cannot see entering your body in one of your favorite foods and then attaching itself to your intestines only to sap you of your energy and nutrients all the while growing longer and longer adding more beads of genitalia to its string? A 30 foot string of sentient spaghetti filling up your belly only for parts of it to be expelled in the worst way possible? <sighs> At least we are not alone in this hara. 6,000 species of tapeworms exist and parasitize most animals. In fact, it's thought that probably all vertebrate animals can host at least one species of tapeworm. Not only are these dastardly parasites diverse in their hostly exploits, they have been so for hundreds of millions of years. Yep, these simple fleshy energy siphons have been pestering the insides of animals since the Devonian period before there were trees. The oldest known possible evidence of these worms are some circlets of hooks and sucker discs from some form of probably parasitic flatworm from Devonian Latvia. These little bits were found attached to the fossilized scales of placoderm and acanthodian fish, but cannot be confidently identified as belonging exactly to the tapeworms, class Cestoda. Cestodes are members of the huge phylum called platyhelminthes, commonly referred to as flatworms. The next oldest fossils are more likely to belong to actual tapeworms. Fossil fish expert Rainer Zangerl and Gerard Case published a huge paper on the Pennsylvanian Sibelidus aculeatus from North America in 1976. This ancient shark precursor cousin is known from many dozens of specimens and as little as two species one specimen of which preserved some crap in its intestine the authors photographed under a scanning electron microscope. The two authors noted the shark crap contained a few microscopic fossilized eggs belonging to a flatworm but could not confidently give a more specific classification, though they speculated they could be from tapeworms. Next on from that were some fossilized eggs found in some more fossilized poo from another extinct shark, but this time from the Permian period Rio do Rasto formation of Brazil. These specimens were described in a 2013 paper by Paula Dencian Diaz and friends in a Plus One article, in which they lay out how they photographed them, then turned some specimens into histologic samples by cutting, polishing, and mounting them against glass slides for observation under high-powered modern microscopes. Thanks to the near-perfect pyrite preservation of these eggs, the author team was able to identify them as belonging to tapeworms, making them the oldest widely accepted examples of these nasty little riz thieves. Aside from these Paleozoic finds, the only other tapeworm remains from before the Quaternary period was published in the Geological Society of America journal by Chihang Luo and colleagues in March of 2024. 
This paper describes a specimen of Kachin amber which preserves a single tentacle of a definitive tapeworm from Cretaceous deposits near Tanai Town in Kachin State of Northern Myanmar. First of all, before I get into the meat of this paper, I just want to say it's kind of sucky that the authors of this paper never mention anything about how controversial Myanmar amber is. This is despite the last five or so years of paleontologists going back and forth on what should be done with these specimens. I have spoken about this issue a few times already, so I don't want to belabor the point. But in short, Myanmar is rife with conflict. Sale of amber from the region has been alleged to fund the war, often using child labor and unsafe labor practices. As such, many paleontologists think it's kind of taking advantage of the situation to contribute to sales of more amber. Many other paleontologists think this is silly and that amber was chosen as a target arbitrarily due to various differences or contradictions in the information surrounding the ethicality of the amber. The issue is not solved and conflict remains in the region. Paleontologists still publish on these resources, but I believe the bare minimum would be to recognize this in any paper published on the stuff and or to try and work on amber that had been collected long before the current conflict or under better circumstances. I think it's kind of shameful to not even mention this in the acknowledgement section of the paper, but I digress. Anyways, the specimen they described is part of the collections at the Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology, Chinese Academy of Sciences, and is a blob of amber with hair-like structures belonging to ferns, scale insect nymphs, and a 10 mm long tentacle from a tapeworm. Once the team micro CT scanned the specimen, they were able to determine that the tentacle most likely belonged specifically to the Trypanorhynchia order of tapeworms, a group of marine tapeworms that parasitize different types of fish. They're weird because they actually hitchhike between hosts as part of their life cycles, and their heads are distinct from those that love to live it up in our intestines. Their heads, scientifically referred to as a scolex, has two to four bothria, or grooves along the head that can act as suckers, and four retractable tentacles that stick out of the top. Nasty. The specimen in the amber is of a tentacle, so the part that sticks out of the heads of these types of tapeworms. What's unusual about this amber fossil is that it's way longer than the tentacles in pretty much all living trypanorings but not enough anatomical traits are preserved for the team to name it as a distinct genus or species. Another thing that's weird about this is the fact that it exists at all. Amber is fossilized tree resin. It forms when globs of the stuff dry out, hardens, and is quickly buried to avoid decay. Then it has to be cooked and squeezed by overlying rock for it to fully fossilize. This stuff usually happens on land, not in the ocean, cause uh, you know, trees. So how did the tentacle of a group of tapeworms predominantly populated by marine forms get its way out of a host and into a tree? The series of bizarre events that must have led to this instance are completely unknown. However, using a little bit of deductive detective work, the author team has come up with a possible scenario. The amber contains sand grains. Kachin amber is known to have been preserved in nearshore environments. Trypanorhynchs lodge themselves close to the anus of their hosts and cannot easily retract their tentacles. So, it's not implausible that the scenario was that a host fish, likely an elasmer branch, ray, shark, or similar, found itself dead in a nearshore environment, beached or stuck in an inland river. A large predator or scavenger comes along and goes ham on the free sashimi only to rip the hapless spaghetti parasite out of the host, rudely tearing its tentacle off and inadvertently tossing it into some gloopy tree resin that was on the ground. Obviously this whole thing is entirely speculative, but it fits with the clues that have been left behind. Unfortunately for the study of paleoparasitology, that's about it. Thankfully for those squeamish towards parasites, that's all I got for you. More fossil tapeworms is always a good thing. I need my impossible blood-sucking noodle monsters. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.